Welcome, everybody. Uh, today, we have a really fantastic meeting again for the ADR support group. We have Dr. Reeve Brander, the director of Rasuli Spine. Dr. Brander, how are you doing today? I'm wonderful. Thank you. How are you? I always start off with that question with everybody. So it's just kind of my, my go-to. So if it's repetitive, I apologize. But we have a great meeting to talk about Experil, a, a new way of doing things for outpatient surgery for, as you mentioned, A-lift surgery, artificial disc replacement surgery. Mm. And we're just going to kind of talk about the protocols, why it's very successful, why it's done so well. There's tons of literature on it out there for sure. Um, Dr. Brander, can you tell us about the mechanism of Expero and how it works and kind of go from there? Sure, absolutely. So um, Expero is a medication that we use in our blocks. Um, which is a type of regional anesthesia that is great for pain management. And Exprel is a liposomal bupivacaine. So what that means is bupivacaine is just a regular local anesthetic. And what they did was they infused it with lipids, which is liposomal essentially. And what that means is it's just encased or encapsulated in a lot of fat. And the great thing about that is that fat is harder for your body to break down. So when we use the Exparel, which is encapsulated in fat, it lasts a lot longer for the patient because it's much harder for the body to break down. So you get a much longer duration of action. What we typically see is patients get about two to three days. So 48 to 72 hours of pain relief. And then is there any side effects after the procedure, after the patient leaves? Is there anything they need to be worried about? Anything, any type of precautions? Yeah, so um, specifically for the Exparel, it's a relatively safe drug um, with local anesthetics. So any type of local anesthetic, there's a ceiling to how much we can give you, which means there's only so much bupivacaine to inject at one time. So the first risk, I would say, is just making sure that you have a skilled practitioner who understands how to use these medications. Um, we have a very small skilled team here at Rizuli Spine and all of them are trained in regional anesthesia. So that's one way we mitigate risk is making sure that our practitioners are skilled. And the other way is um, when you inject the medication, we everything is ultrasound guided. So what that means is we use an ultrasound, which is a machine that lets us visualize structures underneath the skin and visualize our needle. So that way we never inject the medication without seeing where we're injecting it and where the tip of our needle is. What you want to avoid is injecting into a vessel, so into an artery or a vein, because that's where issues and bad things can arise. So again, going back to having a skilled practitioner and having the right equipment will set patients up for success and keep them safe. So if a patient comes in and they are, you know, they're deciding they're gonna stay five to seven days, they, they go through outpatient surgery, they either go to the nursing facility or to an Airbnb, like one of the patients today, and three, four days down the road, pain has gone through the roof. They have distraction pain or belly pain, you know, any type of pain. What would you recommend and what, what is the protocol set up for Rosalie Spine going forward with that? Yeah, so that's a great question. So we typically never bring patients back into the surgery center to re-block them. Um, usually when we block them, it's after they're asleep, um, before we begin the surgery. So if someone goes home, um, we send them home with a list of medications. Most of the time we encourage patients to pick those medications up before they even come into the surgery center so that they have them available. And those are gonna include um, a pain medication, usually like a hydrocodone, um, a steroid like a dexamethasone, a muscle relaxer, and an antibiotic. If someone is experiencing pain, most of the time we're going to know about it because we do post-op calls so the following day after your surgery we call every patient just to check in we check in to see how your experience was and we check in to see how you're feeling and make sure that everything is okay if for some reason a patient tells us that they're uncomfortable or experiencing levels of pain that are not working for them our protocol is to typically either increase the frequency at which they're taking their medications or increase the dose 
at which their medication was prescribed. We do all of this in a controlled manner. We always start conservatively, but we're available at all times for patients before, during, and after surgery so that we can make sure that we control the experience and keep it as easy as possible. You know, that's that. I think the, the biggest thing is keeping that patient comfort, and you guys definitely cover from A to Z. When a patient, uh, you know, talks to Dr. Rasuli, comes up with a protocol on what they're going to do in surgery, can you tell me about the steps that you take, you know, one week out, and then once they get into the surgery center that morning on their whole, the whole day and what to expect? Yeah, so that's a great question. This is actually one of my favorite questions because I, I think this is what really separates Rizzuli Spine from a lot of other surgery centers and hospitals. Um, our, our goal and our core mission is to make sure that we keep everything patient-centric and patient-specific. So not only is the patient the main focus, but we understand that each patient is different and needs different things so that they can have the best experience. So we have a groundwork that we've laid so that we can meet those standards. That groundwork starts with a pre-op phone call from someone from my team a week before surgery. When we call, we go over your entire past medical history. So that includes what your past medical history is, what medications you're taking, what surgeries you've had. We also go over what your expectations are of the surgery we make sure that we get our expectations on what to expect when you come in, how the surgery will lay out. We, met, we make recommendations on what drugs to not take, what drugs to take. So if someone's on blood pressure medications, there are certain blood, pre blood pressure medications that we don't want you to take the morning of surgery. And there are other medications that we do want you to take. So our goal at that time is to not only build a rapport and get to know you, but to also optimize you for surgery so that you can get the best outcomes possible. So that's where it starts. And that's a week before surgery even happens. When you come in on the day of your surgery, how that works is you're gonna check in with the front desk. Once you've checked in, a nurse will come and greet you. They'll bring you back into the preoperative area. They'll get you changed. They're gonna take your vital signs. So blood pressure, pulse ox, um, your oxygen levels, your temperature, your respiratory rate. They're gonna place an IV in. Someone from my team will come they'll talk to you. They're going to go over a lot of the questions that we spoke about on the phone the week prior. And the reason we do that is because it's a way for us to double check to make sure nothing was missed. Those providers have all this information in front of them at that time, but it really makes, it prevents mistakes from happening. And it maybe you forgot to tell us something, right? It's a way, it's a double check system. Um, once the conversation is concluded, you're gonna get some preoperative medications. And these are part of our ERAS protocol, which stands for Enhanced Recovery After Surgery. And this is a cocktail of PO, so medications you take orally, um, that minimize the amount of opioids you'll require during and after surgery. Um, there's a lot of data that shows when you take these medications, specifically before surgery for spine procedures, patients have improved outcomes along with reduced opioid or narcotic needs. Once those medications are in, we give you a little bit of medic uh, medication through the IV. So this is usually like a nice pre-cocktail um, just to help reduce anxiety and make sure that you're nice and comfortable. Once that medication's in, we'll roll you back into the OR. And the first thing we're gonna do is hook you up to some monitors. These are things everybody is familiar with. So nothing scary, blood pressure cuff, whole socks, EKG. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a mask. I'm gonna gently place that mask over your mouth and ask that you just take nice, big, deep breaths. Now I let everyone know there is no anesthesia going through this mask. It is just oxygen. And I usually tell people it's Beverly Hills finest. So get your full. So take nice, big, deep breaths. Um, we'll probably do that for about a minute or two minutes. And then when it's time to go to sleep, we'll let you know there's no surprises here at Rizzuli Spine. And at that point in time, we're gonna slowly start to introduce some medication through the IV. Now this medication is the anesthesia that's gonna put you to sleep. So once that medication is in, you'll be off to sleep. Once you're asleep, we'll put the breathing tube in. You will not remember it going in. And at the end of the procedure, we'll wake you up. 
We'll take the breathing tube out. We'll bring you out to pack you, which is where you'll most likely wake up. There will be a nurse at your bedside and he or she will not leave your side until you are discharged. There is also an anesthesia person in house. So if for some reason there is an issue or an emergency, we are there to help. And if for some reason someone is having more pain than is usual, we can step in and give more medications. Now, once you leave and you're discharged, right? Our relationship doesn't end. So the surgery center will call you the following day. We check in, we make sure everything is okay. We ask you how your experience was and we ask you how you're currently feeling to see if we need to change anything on our end to make sure that you are comfortable at that point in time. And then you'll have a follow-up with Dr. Rizzuli in the following weeks. So when do you tell patients to stop eating? Because I think that's an important question. And then I think a lot of people don't understand why. Can you go through that real quick? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So the standard I would say to stop eating is eight hours prior to surgery, okay? It's just a nice, safe number. Um, and the reason we tell patients to not eat eight hours before surgery is because when we put patients to sleep, we don't want food in their stomach because when we put you to sleep, the esophagus, which is when you chew food, the food goes down the esophagus and travels down into the stomach. Now, there's something called a sphincter, which separates the bottom of the esophagus from the stomach. When I give you anesthesia, that- I'll, I'll make sure we edit this out, we'll connect it all, take the, take the block out. I mean, the, the, you know, what we just lost, but go ahead, finish. Yeah, so we, we tell patients not to eat eight hours before surgery. Um, the reason for that is because when you have general anesthesia and we put you to sleep, we don't want any food in your stomach because that food will come up. And what we don't want is for it to come up and go down into your lungs because that can cause an aspiration pneumonia, also known as a chemical pneumonitis or Mendelssohn syndrome. And that's going to cause an infection in your lungs and make you sick. And we don't want that. It's a safety precaution. Right. So we want an empty stomach, which is why we say nothing to eat eight hours before surgery. It's for your safety. I promise it's not that we want to starve you. We're not mean people. We just want to take care of you and keep you safe. What are some other things that can send you home that morning as far as red flags? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so going back to us optimizing you before surgery, our goal is to give you the best outcome possible. You're having a big procedure and we want you to succeed and, and do well. So if we give you specific instructions such as don't take blood thinning medication, and when we're doing our double check in the morning of surgery and we found out that you've accidentally been taking that, we would cancel you for that because you're at risk for bleeding. Again, we don't want to cancel you, but it's a safety precaution for you. Another thing is blood pressure medication. We're very specific on what blood pressure meds we want you to take and what we don't want you to take. Or if someone comes in and they happen to be extremely hypertensive, which means they have really high blood pressure, again, we want to make sure that we don't bring you back with, med with blood pressure that high because then you're going to be again at risk for bleeding. It's very rare that we cancel patients the morning of because we do the pre-op phone call. So usually myself or my team is aware of any issues that will arise and can mitigate them. So if it's the morning of surgery and we're canceling you, it's really because of an unexpected or unforeseen situation occurs and, and we feel like it would not be safe to continue. And in those situations, we would help facilitate to fix whatever the issue is, whether we need to send you to a cardiologist or a specialist, and we would help reschedule you and make that process as easy as possible. Because that's not fun to have to wake up early and not eat and come in. Um, it's hard. That that's and patients are stressed, like having to go through that anxiety anxiety again. We want to minimize that. We want to make one of the great things about a surgery center and especially Rizzuli Spine is. Our goal is to make the experience nice. Surgery doesn't have to be bad. Surgery doesn't have to be scary. When you, I feel like issues arise when there is no communication and when you don't talk to your providers or when there isn't a plan and a foundation in place. So we try to mitigate all of that risk 
by doing these things to make the experience better for everyone. Especially we have patients flying in from out of state, out of country. That's that's a big ask of someone and people are putting our trust in, putting their trust in us. So it's only fair for us to deliver very high level care here. You, you really laid it out extremely well. And I think, you know, the biggest part of what we're trying to do here is to educate patients, right? Yeah. We're trying to get them to, you know, to prevent from getting sent home that morning, to prevent yeah. from doing things that's going to go sideways. And like you said, the anxiety levels, and you only want to do it once, you want to do it once, you want to be successful. And that's what Rasuli Spine is is very good at, is, is keeping everything on the very up and up and successful, where patients are comfortable, they're relaxed, they feel like they're at home. Even though, like you said, we've got, you got patients from Canada and all over parts of the, the world. and you know, the anxiety to fly into somewhere where they're not familiar with. The good thing is you got a CVS right behind you. So if you need medication, <laughs> you, they, they can go right there yeah. and get their, you know, the, but, and that's true though. You think about it, well, you know, a patient's getting surgery. Okay. There's the CVS Send it, send my medications over there. I'll go get them while, you know, they're getting operated on and, 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 yeah. and it's very streamlined and it's very streamlined. So I, uh, I, I think you hit it on the nail. I loved what you talked about, especially with the advances in Xperro and, and alleviating the pain, alleviating the, the eccentric costs that can rise in hospital stays and uh, fabulous work. I, I really appreciate you taking the time on Cinco de Mayo and uh, I'll see you soon. Oh, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks again, Dr. Brander. Take care.